everyone, it's Xenia here from Abstract Inspiration and welcome back for another process video for the shimmers. Today I'm back in my art journal. This time I'm actually using the Strathmore Mixed Media Journal. I recently started on that journal and I'm enjoying it so much so far. Uh, the paper is fantastic, it works perfectly with sprays and mists. And I really love the way they spread there and I also love the fact that the paper is so thick that it doesn't have any bleeding or any ghosting whatsoever and you will see I'm adding a lot of water and mist on my page and you can't really feel the difference. Uh, I also wanted to mention that I didn't prep my pages, no gesso, no anything, so all the ink goes straight into the paper soaking in and there's still no trace of it at the back side so that is fantastic in my opinion so I would highly recommend this paper I also had uh, I was also very uh, pleasantly surprised that I didn't have any issues with the mists bleeding into the binding that is a common issue when you're using a lot of uh, inks on your page and a lot of watery media uh, you probably already saw that I'm actually dabbing the excess color when it goes in the middle of the page in the spine but in other journals even after doing that I still had issues with bleeding so the fact that I can just dab a little bit of color and avoid any leaking that is um, really great for me now I'm using a few different colors from the blues and from the pinks and reds families uh, from bottom to top, it is Colorings Heidi Ho Blue, Spritz Sapphire, Vibes Sweetheart, uh, Spritz Ruby, and I believe I also added some vibes in Mango Tango. I will also have a list of the supplies in the Shimmers blog, and you can find the link to that in the description box below. There I have the names of all the colors and all the products I used, so you can check it out. Also, if you're planning on placing an order with Shimmers, uh, please consider mentioning my name, Xenia, because this way you can get a lovely freebie with your order. So here you see, that's really a lot of color. I am helping my colors blend by closing the pages together, adding a lot of water, and adding many layers. The secret in my background today is uh, the fact that I'm adding multiple layers of color this way I can make them more intense and blend them better together so at this stage I'm almost uh, finished with my background I am very happy with it so I turn my, my journal vertically to create a final blend by letting the colors drip down and I'm gonna uh, dry it with my heat tool and I do heat them and dry the layers in between the different colors I add just to add um, more depth to the whole design and now it's start to it's time to start building the scene I am using some light modeling paste through this beautiful stencil this is from Donna Downey Studios and I chose to use the light modeling paste because it is absorbent and it gets colored with the mists. I could have used some of the beautiful shimmers, pasties or dazzlers and I was actually considering it, but those create a beautiful resist effect and although I really love playing around with resist techniques, it wasn't uh, the look I was going after on this specific spread. That's why I decided against it. So I'm using this stencil on both pages just to create a border at the bottom of the page. And I'm adding actually a very generous amount of the modeling paste. And the beautiful part is that because the mists are water reactive, and they stay water reactive even after they dry as the modeling paste dries it picks some of the color uh, from the background and you can see how it kind of gets muted and lost and blended in the whole misted background design and that's what I was going for I didn't want it to be too much in your face and resist the color 
I want it to become one with the color and blend with the background. Now I'm going back in with some more color. This time I'm using one of the beautiful creamies and this is like a darker color. And I'm gonna build up some more depth from the bottom. And you see I'm just lightly touching my paintbrush and once again I'm not being very precise or particular with the placement of the color. I'm just dabbing some of it on the page and spraying, with, spraying it with my water bottle and I will just allow the color to blend on its own. And that's the magic of watercolors. It's really all about that. It's not about being very precise with your design and your painting. It's just about letting the colors do their thing. Just add the water and let them spread and create some magical uh, effects on their own. And whenever you have some bigger pools of water or color, you can just dab the excess with a paper towel. Now I dried that layer and I will go back and build some more interest by adding some, some more vibrant areas with that sapphire spritz. And this time, instead of spraying over it, I'm just using my paintbrush because I just want to add some more details instead of, you know, covering the whole area. I'm just going around the stenciled part and creating something like a shadow. You can kind of call it like that, although it's not exactly a shadow. And um, as I said, it's really nice that the paste is actually picking the color and it gets blended beautifully with the rest of the background. Now everything is dry again and I'm gonna proceed in adding more interesting elements to the page. Now I got my acrotones in white and I diluted it with a lot of water to create um, a very fluid white acrylic paint. Now when you do that you lose a lot of opacity and in this case, I really want something opaque. So to create the effect I want, which is an opaque watercolor look, I will just use the diluted color and I will add a lot, a lot of layers until I get the opacity I'm after. So I'm just gonna start with my first layer and you see it has something like, a, like an ink consistency there. Um, that's uh, what they decided to go for. You can dilute it as much as or as little as you want compared, depending on the, the look and the technique you're after. So in this case I'm going back with some more color to cover up the edges. You saw how I just tapped the page and let the color drip, which basically took the color away from the edges. That's why I'm going back in and adding more color. And to create the final result that I have in my head. I will just let it dry completely and I will go back in with the same mixture of water and acrotones and just build up the color and the opacity until I create the result I want. And here it is. Now I'm gonna start working on my focal point and this will be another stencil from Donna Downey Studios. If you are curious on these specific stencils, I will try to include their names in the description box below and as well as the colors from the shimmers products I used and uh, links to where you can find them. So I'm just gonna place the stencil where I want it and with a makeup sponge and some heavy gesso, I'm gonna dab it and blend the gesso to create that uh, image that silhouette over there and just because as I said before the mists are still reacting and coloring the gesso I need to go over it a few times to get the crisp white impression I'm after. Now you can do it as much or as little as you want depending on what you want to do but as I said in my case I really wanted a crisp impression that's why I went over it a few times until I managed to cover up the blue and get a nice white coverage. So this is in a very good place and I'm gonna start adding some details. 
I'm using this paint marker to add something that started as a shadow in my head, but of course it doesn't really look like a shadow. It's more like an outline on the one side. I don't know, I didn't have something very specific in mind, I just wanted to add a few little accents here and there without being very specific in particular about the design. It's generally a very abstract piece. And to finish off the page, I decided to add some journaling and I'm not very, um, I don't know, I'm not very good at writing on my pages. So what I'm doing lately is that I'm just adding some text with stamps, which will work as my journaling. I'm using the Distress Oxide in Black Soot because um, it's not a crisp black, it's more of a off black kind of dark gray color and that is helping just helping it blend with the background better if it was a very crisp black it would stand out too much like it doesn't fit in that's why I chose this color and I'll just dab a few times on my craft mat and get some ink out dilute it with water and use it to add some splatters to basically incorporate some more of that dark shade throughout the page and helping the whole journaling blend in with the whole design. And that is basically all, that's how I finished my page. And you can find more photos and details on the Shimmers blog, as I said, I have the link to that in the description box below, as well as uh, all the products I used. And if you're planning on placing an order with Shimmers, don't forget to mention my name, Xenia, for, um, so you can get an extra little freebie with your order. And if you have any questions, of course, let me know. I'm always very happy to help you in any way I can. And I really, really hope you enjoyed this process and you got inspired to create something fun with your Shimmers Mists. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you again very soon. Bye!